the story of the boatmaker. In the vast empire of the ancient Rome lived a boatmaker known for his craftsmanship. One day a Roman soldier brought news that a rich man had ordered a new boat. But the boatmaker had not even received payment for the previous one. When he inquired about his payment once again, as he had done repeatedly, the Roman soldier politely told he could only take the boatmaker's message back to the rich man. The boatmaker worried and told his wife how he considered taking action. He had waited long enough. This was not honest behavior. This had no fairness towards him who had worked so hard. He had waited long enough. His friends tried to calm him and worried for him. The journey alone could be dangerous and a journey to Rome would take long. But he had made up his mind. He took one last look at the town's market and so the boatmaker left on his long journey, not by boat, but by foot. In Rome, the rich man was greeted by many who craved his acceptance and influence, who were currying for his favor. Little did they know about the real state and behavior of the rich man. In the forest, still far away from Rome, the boatmaker came across a group of Roman builders and soldiers. It did not take long for him to convince them of his skills in woodwork. They too had heard of the boatmaker. Soon he found himself working with them and after a long day sharing the campfire. The following day the boatmaker continued on his journey. By afternoon the boatmaker was hungry. He found a tavern. By evening the tavern was full of people. They had all been working at their farms and nearby fields. Again, the boatmaker asked for a place to stay for one night. He was told he could stay in the barn if he was fine sharing with the tavern owner's animals. The next day, the tavern owner did not want any money. And when the boatmaker inquired about the road to Rome, the tavern owner told his donkey could show the start of the route if the boatmaker could walk the donkey to the field. And so it was done. And the donkey kept looking and listening for a while as the boatmaker disappeared to the horizon. On his way across the fields and meadows, he came across a family that was going forward slowly. The father explained the wheel of the wagon was about to break so he did not want to risk it. The boatmaker offered to fix the wheel and soon it was much easier for the family to travel. In Rome, the rich man continued to party without any worry or care for the boatmaker. It was a scorching hot day, but he kept going forward high up to the mountains. And as the sun started to set, he finally spotted a place to stay. A magnificent cave would keep him safe. A cave so magnificent that another creature had already taken it as its nest. A dinosaur waited at the entrance, but the boatmaker humbly asked if he could stay for one night. That night the rich man slept badly, but the boatmaker dreamt of his wife back home. When sunrise came the man thanked the dinosaur, and the dinosaur told the man was the first that had not thrown a spear at him. The Dino was forced to spend most of his time in the cave and the desert. The mighty creature that once had roamed free now searched for shelter and tried avoiding humans. The dinosaur stayed guarding for a moment as the boatmaker slowly disappeared to the horizon. Next, the boatmaker got to experience the mighty quarries where marble was excavated and sent to Rome. He admired the craftsmanship the workers had for stone as he had for wood. And then, finally, 
The boatmaker knew he was getting closer to Rome, even if reaching the center would still take time. Once he reached Rome, the splendor of the buildings, some of them already then in ruins, was spectacular. The selections of fruits and fish, vegetables all you could dream of, was available on the streets and markets of Rome. He hoped that someday he would return here with his wife and they could share all this together. When he reached the rich man's house, a painter told him he did not know where the busy and important rich man was, but he knew he would have no time for a boatmaker however far he had come. The golden ceiling of the house would stay in the boatmaker's mind for a long time. That evening, while taking a bath after his long journey, the boatmaker knew what he would do. Like a spear on fire in the Roman night, his thoughts were clear. The next day, on the banks of the Tiber River, he walked and searched for the boat he had made. He took a rock and threw the rock on the boat. The rock crashing through it, he set the boat that would soon sink free. A Roman soldier spotted this and did his duty. Soon the boatmaker was apprehended and brought to the courthouse. From the grand entrance he was led to the exterior courtroom. Here Romans would judge his actions. Friends of the rich man were laughing and mocking him, the boatmaker who had destroyed the work he had done. He would have no more customers. Not getting paid at all by anyone would now be the outcome of his quest for justice he was mocked. But then suddenly the dinosaur appeared and told he would bear witness to the boatmaker's character. To emphasize his determination, the dinosaur revealed how fast he could become a two-headed monster and everyone agreed to listen to him. The dinosaur told he had heard from the deer, the ducks and geese in the barn, and the horse with now a fixed wagon wheel. The dinosaur told what a fine man the boatmaker was, and how his craftsmanship surely would be needed in the future too. The Romans announced their decision. The boatmaker was to be released and set free. He was granted new orders and the leaders of Rome would make sure the rich man would pay with interest what he owed. Even the dinosaur was granted a special travel permit, Meanwhile, the rich man found out he would party alone for a while now. People started to celebrate. And as they set to leave under the protection of Rome, many came to wish a good journey for the now, even more famous boatmaker. And finally, they reached the boatmaker's home. The townspeople greeted him as did his friends. But he only had eyes for his wife. He had brought a book for her. And that night, they sat calmly together by the river. The dinosaur was granted a special right to wear a toga 
and it soon became a favorite of the local Roman fortress, and even with some of the women. At night it stood by the river guarding them all. The next day the boatmaker went back to work as he had done before his journey. New orders from Rome would keep him busy for a long time. Now everyone wanted a boat by the boatmaker. And such was the story of the boatmaker, an honest, hard-working man who even became friends with a dinosaur. The end. <laughs>